What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. And in this video, we are going to be discussing our reflection of the year 2022, as well as making some bold predictions of the year 2023, because, you know, we finally hit the new year and apparently 2023 is going to be the year of gaming. And obviously, I can't do this alone. I need the Marsman crew along with me. To my left is Haki. What's up, guys? And to my right is Langella Kill. Happy New Year and what's up, everybody? <laughs> yeah, Happy New Year, guys. It was a uh, it was a crazy year, especially at the end there. And uh, we were on vacation for a little bit, uh, enjoying ourselves as uh, as the crew does. And and we're finally back at it with uh, with some new videos. And the first one I wanted to do was kind of reflect on the year. And obviously, this has been official one year of the channel. And I honestly am just ecstatic to see where we've been and and where we're he heading in the right direction. And so it's kind of a good thing to kind of reflect and, and kind of think about the, the, how the year was, especially with all these crazy games that have released, especially um, with how much we've been playing and growing as a channel. So one of the first things I kind of want us to do is, is give out our Marsman Gaming Awards of the year. And, and each of us kind of have seen, you know, played a lot of different games throughout the year. And we, we thought to ourselves, what is the best overall game? that you personally played and whether it is the is the fan favorite of, of everybody or not it's really up to you and what you feel like is the best game overall and uh you know what to be honest i want to go first here i think overall best game of the year and, and i think most people would agree that when you narrow down the top games of the year you would probably talk about games like god of war elden ring and, and the the list goes on with all those others that were nominated but I'm going to go with Elden Ring being my pick for my game of the year, because I'll tell you, you know, I haven't had a game in a long time that has engulfed my life to the level that Elden Ring has. And now, granted, I played a lot of different games throughout the year, but Elden Ring was one of those games where, yeah, you know what? I start out with uh, with a grind and and yeah, you know, I fail a bunch of times, but it almost just made you want to keep playing to, to keep trying and to try to go out and defeat whichever boss you're stuck on or which level you're stuck on. And I, I never once felt like discouraged to, to try. Like, you know, I got angry. Yeah, don't, don't get me wrong. I, I felt just just out of my mind upset or just pissed off to the point where, yeah, I sometimes like I had to take a break, but I always kept coming back and, and playing some more. And for me, the overall, I just felt like Elden Ring was the, the, the overall best game I played throughout the year. Uh, but Langella Kill, I want to get your opinion next. What do you think is the best overall game of the year from your perspective? Yeah, I actually thought 2022 was a pretty good gaming year. There was a lot of pretty good games, and, and it starts with the game of the year. You know, we talk about uh, the nominees that were at the Game Awards, and I think they were all deserving nominees. But um, I think two of the games were a notch above the rest, and that was God of, the, God of War and Elden Ring. And my game of the year is Elden Ring. Um, we talked about it on our kind of our preview for the game awards um, on who we thought the game of the year was going to be. And it kind of surprised a bunch of people that it was Elden Ring, but it didn't really surprise me um, just because of how um, Elden Ring was like a kind of phenomenon. It kind of hit the perfect storm of when it came out. And you've, you guys mentioned this before. It came out when there wasn't really games that was out. And it also was at a time where a lot of these games were going live service and even like stretching at the end of 21. Um, and they were coming out with not complete games. And so Elden Ring comes out, it's a, what you call a, you know, a box product, right? That's the game. There's not a live service aspect to it. Um, you know, they obviously had some hiccups, but it was a complete game at a time where there wasn't a lot of games and it really nailed uh, a lot of the aspects. So I have over 200 hours playing um, in Elden Ring. So that engulfed my life as well. And I think it's deserving. Um, they want to, game awards and i think it's my game of the year as well yeah and i i feel you man i play a lot of that and i think all three of us have multiple times on stream and even off stream Aki, your what's your game of the year here yeah so i think you guys can guess it um it, it is elden ring um we're kind of all copying each other here but uh, there's a reason why uh, we're all seeing elden ring because it, it was a very very good game um and the point that i want to make you guys both made uh very good points the point i want to make is that I was not an RPG uh, open world player. I was a first person shooter. I was Halo, Call of Duty, Overwatch. Like those were my main games. Um, and you guys kind of got me into it. It was, hey, you know, hockey, uh, we can play together. And I was like, all right, man, I'll give it a shot. It ended up being one of my favorite games of, of all time. Um, 
And another point is I put in 60 or 70 hours. And, you know, not every game is perfect. The game crashed. I put in 60, 70 hours. The game crashed. And I had to restart. And I was like... I wasn't going to restart for the game and you guys were like, Hey, I was going to, I'm, I'm going to help you guys. You know, you guys were going to help me get back to where I was at. So, um, I mean, now I have hundreds of hours in the game and I still play it <laughs> help people. So it's a very fun game. That's my game of the year. Yeah. I feel like the thing is I, I kind of want to start with, I wanted to start with the game of the year. Cause I feel like when you, when you look back at last year and, and Legilla Kill said this before, I think a lot of people were, were nervous that 2022 would look almost like 2021 in a way where, a lot of the games that you were you were expecting to drop that year got pushed, right? And I think you know, 2021. You know, granted, there were some great games that came out, but it was pretty much barren. And I think that people were nervous that you were going to get another outlook of that, especially with you know the you know Starfield getting delayed and and obviously God of War coming in at the very end, right? It, it was not giving us a lot of like look into what the game looked like or how it played really until the last month before the game released did we really see a lot of information and it was i say a month but it was probably like two months two months two and a half months of of where we had some information about the game and it's releasing and and all that stuff and i think that's where people started to get more hyped about it and i, and I was excited because we finally we we're gonna get another game and i i was sitting there like yeah Elden Ring's gonna run away with the game of the year you know award if nothing else came out and uh, obviously, God of War gave it its run for its money, and, and it was a solid game too. And I did a review on that, and go check that out uh, on this on this card. I'm going to post it in the corner. Um, but the whole point is, is that uh, it, there's a lot of good games that came out this year, um, a lot more than I expected. Yeah, and we met Surprise Horizon Forbidden West. Even Stray was kind of this, you know, came in out of the nowhere. Surprise, yeah. Ended up being pretty solid, and you have Xenoblades. Um, and then uh, Plague's Tale. So, you know, they had some, then Splatoon, you know, like there were some games, Call of Duty also came out. So like it did come with, you know, it wasn't barren like you mentioned in 2021. Yeah, yeah. And, and when I'm looking at like a surprise, I mean, I, I want to just be quick with this, but a surprise for me, um, I think honestly, I'm like mixed, but I really did enjoy games like like i knew god of war wasn't going to be surprised but i really did enjoy games somewhat of like stray i thought was a big surprise for me i i honestly thought that that was going to be you know not as good as what people had held it up to be i enjoyed it i you know i didn't think it was amazing but it was a solid game a surprise for sure about how well it did it did come out um and i think that you know obviously the you know plague's tale what the first installment was good but the second one being better, I think a lot of the ratings also did help. And I, I was surprised that it jumped the level that it did um, in, its, in its overall success. Um, but yeah, I, I think that was some of the surprise that I had in mind. Um, but if, do you guys have any surprises that, that you thought? Hockey, I'll let you go first. Did you, do you have any surprises that you had for this year? Um, so for the games that I, I mean, for the games that I didn't play, I thought Stray, kind of like you said, was was a surprise. Um, when I first saw that game, I did not think highly of it, but I did watch um, some gameplay. I watched a decent amount of gameplay, and actually, um, like the graphics looked cool, like the actual movements of like the cat looked pretty cool and everything. So I thought that was a surprise. Um, for the games that I played, I mean, I had such high hopes for Overwatch. Um, and it was surprising to me of um, how mediocre the game is um, mm -hmm. from Overwatch 1. Overwatch 1 was like a, a huge thing when it came out and it stayed huge. You know, they had a pro league and everything and Overwatch 2 came out and it was just very, um, uh, very mid, if, if you want to say, you know. Right, game of the year, Overwatch 1. Yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah it was huge, you know. Um, so yeah, it was just very, um, it was a little sad for me. That was one of my favorite games. Yeah, Langelico, do you have any surprises? Yeah, I'm thinking back on what you guys said. Uh, it's it's weird just agreeing with you guys on everything, but good surprise was Stray uh, to me. I, that was another game when I saw the preview. I was like, there is a 2% chance that this is a good game, and they actually did a pretty good job. Um, so that was a good surprise. And the bad surprise is, to me, the nature of first-person shooters at this point. And I, kinda, I know Overwatch is not a first-person, it's third-person, but I want to lump Overwatch in there. The state of first-person shooters right now is not good. Mm -hmm. um, and we go now through the year of 2022, and it hasn't improved. So that's kind of my disappointing surprise. Yeah, yeah, and I, I do agree. I think uh, 
all of us kind of are on the same boat, at least with uh, with Stray, because I think most people uh, were, were kind of in that same boat. They were kind of ragging on Stray, like, and I was one of those people saying Stray's a cat game. And we're playing a cat game. And that's going to be something that we drop. But to go along with the, the best game of the year, we have to talk about the worst game of the year. I think um, you have to, and this is based off of what we play, because obviously there's games out there that probably yeah, would never, yeah, are probably yeah. awful in development and how they look and all in all aspects, but we can't play every game out there. But I think, I mean, if I was picking a horror, one of the worst games of the year, and maybe this is just about my personal opinion about what I've seen and what I've experienced, I'm going to go with Call of Duty. I think Call of Duty for me is one of the biggest disappointments of the year. I think I, I'm going to go with it's disappointing. It started out being very, very well liked, right? The hype behind Call of Duty had overarched what the success is itself. Now, granted, the success is the highest selling Call of Duty game in in a decade more than a decade and it's it's probably i think the highest cold duty selling game ever i think and, and what you know how you can tell that it's not a good game is that in the very beginning everybody everybody from content creators that i like and respect to even us playing the game in the very beginning right to now the amount of vitriol and hatred for call of duty at this current stage has increased tremendously right it is now been regarded as such a mid game that they're like dude this is what the hell like this is not a good game like people people who once were like the game is amazing right this is a great great step in the right direction for call of duty have now turned and said this game sucks like it's it's kind of like it, it it's amazing because i think the hype behind a call of duty game that doesn't stink right out the gate got them all excited but then they started to play it more often and then you're realizing like this game is really not that good like it's not it's not it's not the worst cod like, i'm not gonna say this is vanguard level because vanguard is the one of the worst cods i've ever seen right but it's disappointing to me i think maybe when i say the worst overall game it's because i play call of duty a lot i mean i i'm pretty good at it i think the overall outlook but man i've never played a game before that has gotten me so damn angry to play oh that's I, cat yes you have uh, i mean i played i played games that have gotten me angry before like halo's gotten me angry before i played overwatch has gotten me angry before but call of duty is one of those games this year especially has gotten me so damn angry when playing it that i'm literally like just i'm just furious i, I, I mean elden has got me angry before but i've never been to the level of like yo like i i i don't even enjoy myself when i'm blooming well like i'm just angry like it's just it's it's gotten outrageous but maybe i'm outrageous for thinking that i i'm just saying overall maybe it's not even the worst game but i'll tell you experience wise i've never seen a game that started out so hot and now has decreased itself and it's and it's fun how much you play it right it's just decreased and everyone's been joining jumping on that bandwagon angelica what's your worst game of well, the year when you do this aspect of this category Call of Duty is not the worst game developed, no. right? It's just, again, expectations and reality, right? So that's why it's classified. I just want to clarify that because I'm going to be in a similar boat, not for Call of Duty, because this is kind of what separated for me. Call of Duty is up there for me. Um, when we say worst, it's, just, it's kind of like the reality versus the expectations that you have for that game. I'm going with Overwatch because at the end of the day, I've still picked up even though some, I hate myself afterwards when I pick up the controller and put three hours into Call of Duty, and I'm wondering why the hell I'm doing that. But I have zero desire to pick up the controller and put on Overwatch. And to me, that makes it worse than Call of Duty. You know what I mean? So to me, you know, I didn't have the highest expectations for Call of Duty. I think it is the best Call of Duty since 2019, which again is not saying a lot, but that's just where the reality is. And um, there's so many different like little things in Call of Duty that that really take away the fun, whether it is the, you know, matchmaking, um, the maps, all that. But Overwatch really just copied Overwatch 1, went to the 5v5, which was a good decision, but new characters lacking, new maps lacking, new modes lacking. And Haki can go even to more because he's a huge uh, Overwatch guy. They've had major server problems. 
and major matchmaking problems. And and to me, this was again going from a game of the year in Overwatch One to a half baked money grab, which it feels like because we paid forty dollars for that beta, and it was the we just set that money on fire. That was almost a level battlefield, right? So to me, it's Overwatch. Yeah. And uh, Haki, you, you're a person who is big into both, just like both all of us here. What do you think is the worst game of the year? Yeah, so, um, we're actually going to all three have different worst games of the year, which I think is good. But that does point to what Angelic Kill said before, that me, which is saying that the shooters right now yeah. are not in a good state. If we're going to have three top shooters, and I'll say what mine is next, if we're going to have three top shooters that should have blown the roof off of the game, uh, you know, off of the gaming industry in, in 2022, um, that just tells you it, it's not good. So, yeah, Call of Duty, um, it's very hard to play Call of Duty and be even a smidge happy while doing it. Um, Overwatch, just like Angelica Gill said, uh, the servers were a mess. I paid $40 for two weeks to play Overwatch 1. Um, I mean, I've uninstalled the game again, and I don't think I'm going to play it. <laughs> anymore <laughs> how bad it is oh my god um they've completely slowed down all the characters some people think it's good i think it's horrible um uh, but my worst game of the year and i just want to remind you guys of tanks going up buildings yeah but oh, see i know what you're gonna say but technically technically that's not that's a, last year that's last year that's is not that, even no, battlefields last it year it technically yeah. was 2021 yeah, you're just, you're just talking about the updates. Trust you're talking me, about yeah. the updates. Trust me, it, it, it was 2021. That yeah, it 2020 because yeah. it was November. It was that November yeah, range that's of fair, 2021. Yeah. That's why I would have picked that. Trust that's me, fair, I would have. That would have been. Know, that know, was a unanimous, know. unanimous victory yeah. of Battlefield being as bad as oh, it is. See, I'm bugging. I'm sitting here like, yo, they're not picking Battlefield. I know, What's dude. Going on? <laughs> yeah, so if I'm if I'm choosing between those two, it's Overwatch. Like, yeah. I'll play Call of Duty. I'm probably never going to play Overwatch ever again. Like, I'll try Overwatch 3 when it comes out in 10 years. Oh, my God. But I will never play Overwatch pretty much ever again. It's Work. sad. It's sad. Because Overwatch, like like Lejoko says, is a game of the year. Of a sequel to a game of the year. And this is what they come out with, right? This is yeah. what is what Blizzard gives us. All right. And listen, I'm not against bagging on Battlefield because they've updated they, it in the new year. You guys went back so on bad. it. I was lucky enough to stay away. Ah, uh, yeah. And it just still feels like a soulless corpse. It's it, it really does. It's 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 freaking horrible, man. I I was honestly like hoping that Battlefield was gonna make a, a make a splash in 2023, but they could have a splash in 2022. They could have because was, the, the I, first I, person shooters and the multiplayer shooters are not very good. But you think they could have still made just, a move, and yet. Just think about it. Halo Infinite, with having little to no content, was still one of the better shooters of 2022 with with how bad everything else around it is, right? Like, just think about that. Just think about that for a minute there. Like, Halo, Halo for me, I can't consider it the worst game of the year because well, of the fact I played it. I know, I'm just saying, because technically it's like it was on the border too, but, like, I wouldn't even consider it that because like you know i play it a lot and i think it's a good game it's just like it's missing content but battlefield looks like it's just what? it looks yeah. like ea ea charged you full price to for nothing like that yeah, like, we're starting to get into a first person yeah multiplayer, and we'll, uh, we'll get we'll, we can have oh, a like, whole whole discussion halo, on that. halo wasted a year practically yeah and it still doesn't beat battlefield and overwatch so like that just shows you how bad those two how they released and how they yeah. look now listen, so with with our our channel officially hitting one year on its existence, right? We started officially in uh December twenty second, right, of, of twenty twenty one, right? So it was been now what a fit we just passed the one year mark not that long ago. And and so I kinda wanna get your opinion on what you think was your worst take of the first year of the channel. Um and, and this will include that that December period um all the way to today uh to see what your worst take was and i think uh i'll go i'll go first to kind of just rub just you know dirt in my wound my worst take of the year probably had to be where i gave i gave halo infinite pro i think i gave halo infinite a nine 
a nine point Halo? Uh, Halo. I gave a nine point two for <laughs> Halo Infinite. I think on my official <laughs> review, which if you go back, guys, and I'll put the I'll put the the card here. It was my second. It was my first official video I've ever posted, other than my highlight video of my channel ever. And if you go and check out the quality of it compared to today, you'd probably be just in shock of how different it is. But just from that first review I did, which was roughly a half an hour long, um, that review, I was in all the feels of actually having a Halo game that didn't include ultra, ultra, you know, boosters and ground pounds to the point where I was like, this is the next gen of Halo. And I'm just excited that we're getting this and it's going to be great. And I was almost giving a rating for the future of Halo Infinite, not even the you know, not even like what it was at the moment, right? I was looking at it like at the hope of what it was going to become. Um, because I, when I look back at it and I did my official year one of, of Halo and I did a whole review of that too. And you can go check down the card above as well. But I looked at my take and I, when I rewatched that video and I was looking back and was like, I gave that damn game a 9.2. I think I think it was a 9.2 or a nine overall. And I'm like, yo, what the hell was I saying to myself back then? I was, you were anticipating that they had a live service team. Yeah, I was. I was, I was. So, I was thinking with whatever I was smoking. Management. Whatever I was smoking, I was telling myself in the mirror that they're gonna come out with some really great drops in the first year of this game, and it's gonna be phenomenal. And and they did it. And and that was the crazy thing is that you think to yourself with how bad all the other shooters were. That Halo Infinite would amount to being a game of the year candidate with having a solid story, having good gameplay, but little to nothing else that went along with it, right? Um, with with the multiplayer component at least. Uh, but Angelic Hill, I ask you, man, what was your worst take from this past year of the channel? Like I said, I don't want to. I think I've had some good takes this year overall, but obviously, my definitely worst one is. I predicted that we were going to hear about Fable this year, and and I think you have a better chance of of spotting a unicorn than than hearing about Fable. So that was a terrible take by me. I thought when we talked about the um, E3 and also the kind of the fall um, the fall showcases with Xbox, I was predicting Fable was coming, and it's nowhere to be seen. And and I'm just going to kill off that Fable until I actually see something. Um, but that was definitely my worst take without question. Yeah. Uh, Haki, what was your worst take? Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's a little connected to what you had said, Mars, man. And I'm pretty sure you guys are going to laugh if you know what you're saying. My best take is putting Halo Infinite and I'm almost positive. I put Halo Infinite third best Halo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Now, this, this is connected to my, it's in, it was in the hopes that it would be that good. Um, it's probably not even in the top five, right? <laughs> in the state, a year after it came out. Um, that is definitely my hot, steamy take. <laughs> and it was steamy. Being <laughs> the third best That's... Halo ever. In front of Halo 1. It was Halo 3, Halo 2, Halo Infinite. Yep, yep. Halo 1. So that's my hot take. Now, it could... Maybe it could get <laughs> two or three years or four years, but I was I was wrong <laughs> doing that. So, yeah, listen, guys, I mean, at the end of the day, when we look back at things we say from now to even to next year, we have to also criticize ourselves again, because, listen, we don't have hindsight at the at that moment. We we have what we have at them at that time. And then we just make these claims. And now we talked about the past. It's about talking about the future. And that's what the main component of this video is going to be about. It's discussing the future 2023 everyone has been telling us 2023 is the year of gaming right we have all these games that are are you know possibly over the horizon and it's up to us now to analyze and and what i want us to do is create some really bold takes some takes that right from now that we're going to make some claims so that a year from now when we look back and say all right how do we do in 2023 we can either have some spot on answers or some horrifying takes um, so I want to go. I want to start off with doing the way too early predictions, and the first one I want us to do is who do you think wins Game of the Year? And this is obviously extremely early. Um, and you know what? I I could give the easy answer. I can give the easy answer because there's a few games out here that I think 
will obviously be a contender. But I think the 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 maybe I'll make a bold take, and you probably I'm gonna hear a lot of flack from this from a lot of people. But the bold take I'm gonna make for who wins Game of the Year is Starfield. I think Starfield wins Game of the Year, and obviously a lot of people are gonna say Legend of Zelda: uh, Tears of the Kingdom. I I think that's the easy pick, the soft the 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 probably the more likely pick that people will make. But I'll make the bold pick and say Starfield because Starfield is going to be one of those games that I think is going to be in a spot where there's not a lot of games coming out around the same time. It's going to be, uh, you know, technically early of the year. But I think the fact that if it, if it comes out, I think if it honestly comes out a little bit later past Legend of Zelda, it might take up some of the conversation, but it looks like it might drop around that same time. And I think with the, all the customization components and the possible, what do you, what they said was the multiple galaxies that you can go experience and all that stuff, it's going to be, and it's exclusive to next gen consoles. I think that's kind of what is going to push people to say, this is a next gen game. And I think a lot of people are going to be hyped to actually be able to play it. And when they finally get their hands on it and it's a fallout style, but just space, people love that stuff open world rpg where you can go out and and create your own basically stations and all that stuff i think people will love that concept and if it lands with no bugs and actually has a story component to it like fallout 4 did right then you'll see a game of the year candidate and i think that's what it'll drop with i think people are already bagging on starfield i think i, I think and we kind of talked about this in previous videos but but that's a needs a big game to land right todd howard you know needs a big game to land right they need they need to rebound from fallout 76 right they need a game that will shock people to the level of fallout 4 fallout obviously obviously you know obsidian did new vegas but fallout series has some really good games they need to bring that company back and make a game similar to fallout but starfield could be a game that they've been hyping for so long if it meets the standard it will win game of the year if it does it right but uh hockey what do you think will win game of the year way too early prediction yeah so that's actually my choice as well um you know i do have um you know an xbox so a lot of the games that i play are, are obviously xbox games i know ps uh you know ps5 and playstation have their own um story games and, and stuff like that that are good but i'm thinking starfield um you made a lot of good points uh, i'm not going to piggyback off of everything that you've said but a point that i want to make is that they have delayed it at least once i don't I, I think they might have delayed it twice but um it's what that tells me is that they're seeing what happened to cyberpunk they're seeing what happened to these other games that might not have come out full or might have come out really buggy so hopefully they found something or they needed to add something to make sure the experience when the game comes out is extraordinary the game what we saw of the game uh during the little preview it looked awesome like you said going to other galaxies going to other planets being able to actually traverse those planets and they're like full planets um i think that's really cool great idea so like you said, if they land, it can definitely be a contender, uh, if not win game of the year. So, Langella Kill, who do you think is going to win? Ray, too early prediction. Yeah, I think um, it's a tough one because Starfield has the formula to win game of the year, but it just it, it it's so massive on what they're promising, uh, and I think very difficult to land on. Um, on what they're promising and and on the legend of zelda side which that's the one i'm going with i'm going with legend of zelda um what makes me a little nervous about legend of zelda is number one the lack of we don't we're not seeing much of it mm -hmm. right so we haven't seen much of it yet um to this point which makes you a little bit nervous and the sequel problem right we're making a sequel to a game of the year um it's difficult to repeat it and so I am going to go with Legend of Zelda because I do have faith in Nintendo when it comes to Legend of Zelda. There hasn't really been a bad Legend of Zelda game, so I know that there's going to be a floor, but I do think they do enough. And I don't think, um, I think Starfield will be a very strong game, um, but I do think there's going to be some live service aspect to Starfield. And so I don't think it's going to be as complete as everyone will hope at, at launch, but I do think they'll have a strong core and they will add to it going forward. But I'm going to give the, the edge to Legend of Zelda. 
I think, yeah. I, I mean, my thing is, if I was going to pick me, if, and this is a super bold, right? And if I'm right on this, then, you know, you got to start, guy better start getting paid some money for this. But if I was picking my candidates and who I was looking at from just a list of games that are possibly, uh, you know, on this list here, I would say Starfield, Legend of Zelda, uh, Final Fantasy 16. It looks like a really, really big game that could be co uh, coming out this obviously this year. Is that, a, is that a new game or is that a? That's a new. 16 is a new one. Yeah. It's a new one. Yep, wow. Spider Man, uh, Spider Man Two, uh, supposed to be dropping this year. And the last game, I'm, I'm actually this would be bold, but I'm gonna go with Stalker Two. Will be the last game I think. Will be the surprise game that is dropped as a. Uh, as a because they said did announce it was dropping this year. Stalker Two, if you don't remember, was the that game that was uh, made by that that Ukrainian game developer. It was showing like in, it was showing in in that area basically where of all like the mutants and everything. It was actually had a very interesting uh, trailer uh, that was shown at the not the not the recent. Um, it was actually at this I think it was at the recent Summerfest or the year before. Very good looking game, but obviously the war in Ukraine had caused that developer to have to halt all production immediately and then that's why it didn't drop this past year but they said announced that it was coming this year but they were they were yet to say a confirmed date i think it's supposed to drop in december um but i honestly i, I granted if it does drop in december it means it won't count for game of the year contention for this 2023 but if it does drop i think it would be that sneaky pick in right i think to be honest with you but i would see starfield legend of zelda spider-man 2 Final Fantasy 16 and my surprise is Stalker too. I think would be the surprise fifth pick. I know there's six, but uh, I will we'll see. We'll be magical with the sixth one. Um, but yeah, I think those those would be be my, my uh, picks for what I think what I think will happen. But I also want to get your pick for what do you think will be the most overrated game of the year? And uh, this one I'm a little I, I might have some insider information because I did see some previews that did come out for this game and. It was it's actually supposed to come out pretty soon. And I could be wrong. I mean, listen, uh, at the end of the day, preview's a preview. But a lot of reports have been telling me that Forspoken has not been looking really good. Um, this is made by Square Enix. Um, they are, uh, it's a uh, PS5 exclu exclusive game. They have said that it's not looking too great when it comes into the gameplay component. Like they said the gameplay, like some co concepts are cool. But they just feel like as if it's just it's like button mashing a lot of times and it's just like the dialogue and story does not seem like it's melding well and i'm a little like i i feel like that would be the easy pick for me because i'm already seeing previews because the game's coming out not that long from now um but if i'm not gonna pick another game i think it's gonna be the most overrated game bold pick for mine i think it's gonna be uh hogwarts legacy i think hogwarts legacy this the harry potter game i think it's a great idea it, it's a great ip with Harry Potter is a great story, but how many Harry Potter games really landed as well as you hoped, right? I, me and Langella Kill played, I think, one of the Harry Potter game when you were kids on the PS2, and that game was trash. Like, I mean, and it was, I think it was Harry Potter and the, the Chamber of Secrets, I think. Um, that was bad, right? And I, I don't remember how many Harry Potter games really did well. And I think, it, I hope it does well, because I think the game could be really cool where you pick your own how your your own house and all that stuff and you could you go through a whole story and everything and, and everything would be great but i don't i don't see it landing i think it's going to be an overrated game i think it's going to not meet the hype and i think we'll fall flat um but Legelica, what do you think is the most overrated game bold prediction yeah i know this might be uh tough but i do think and I want to make sure I get the, the name right. Redfall, I do, uh, I think is going to be just based on what my expectations are and what a lot of expectations are. I think it's going to fall short of, of those expectations. And so um, I do think Redfall um, and, and the big aspect to me is trying to recapture Left 4 Dead concepts and i know this is going to be kind of a it's different right because it's doing kind of more vampire-ish type stuff but capturing that is is pretty difficult and we saw that back for blood truck tried doing it and it, it fell short and i do think redfall is kind of going to fall in, into a similar thing fighting this i know again it's vampires but it kind of goes into that zombie group fighting you know survival type game and it's hard to capture the magic that Left 4 Dead did. I hope I'm wrong on this, but I am going to go with Redfall. 
Yeah, I was still was debating that one. Uh, that's why I didn't put it in my game of year possibles because I was like, I don't know, man. Because uh, usually when you see a, a, a four player co op game, very often they kind of fail. Like, there's it's very yeah. difficult to capture that four player co op in the right way with good story gameplay and not feeling bland, right? So, hockey, what do you think will be the most overrated game of the year? Yeah, so let me say real quick, I thought my, if we were going to do the surprise one, the Redfall is actually going to be my surprise one. So I was hoping that, you know, I was hoping that it captured the, you know, the, uh, what was it, uh, Left for Dead uh, vibe. So I'm, I'm hoping, you know, um, it does look cool. But my surprise is going to be um, Assassin's Creed. Um, now they said that they're going back to like the stealth uh, which is really what their main thing was. That's when the games were great, you know, one, two, and three. My brother used to play three, and, and I used to sit there watching him play it. Um, and it was fun to even watch someone you know, play it, you know, sneaking around and everything. So, I mean, they said they're going to bring it back, but um, I don't know if I believe them, you know, and I don't know if I believe them having a good story. Um, I mean, yeah, but that's your, that's your uh, overrated is going to be Assassin's Creed. That's what my overrated is going to be. Bold take. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I like when I saw Assassin's Creed's future plans um, with, with the, the games that they're going to come out with uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage is going to be the newest one that is dropping in Baghdad. I'm trying to bring back a lot of those Assassin's Creed one vibes to a lot of people. I, I just don't, I really don't see it. They have not been consistent with dropping good Assassin's Creed games since Assassin's Creed Black Flag, right? And, you know, they've had some solid location. I think the locations they pick were all good ones for the most part. I say good locations, but it's like they had, like the ones I thought were, were down, downright down were like Unity and, and, um, and what was the other one? There's one that was during the French Revolution, which was a good location good time period to pick I had solid mechanics sometimes the other one in london during the industrial revolution was one of the worst ones i think i've ever played to the point where the game was straight up free for having xbox gold right like <laughs> like it's like it was Man. it was getting like that battlefield moment of free game that was once charged you full price for and you know that i agree man i i feel like assassin's creed's been missing a good solid assassin's creed game that can really hit you right in the feels man because i mean it's tough dude um now i kind of want to get us right into another question about game you know do you think 2023 will actually be a year of gaming i think this is something that a lot of people have been mentioning about you know there's so many games that are going to be released this year supposedly based on reports of you know everything getting pushed back from covid the last time i i remember a year of gaming where it wasn't just like two games or or one game that took out took the stand the last time we had a year of gaming was the year the game of the, the game of the year awards were narrowed down to The Witcher, Fallout 4, Metal Gear Solid 5, and Tomb Raider, right? Where that year had had three very good candidates for game of the year, a fourth that was probably right out right outside the cusp, and obviously Witcher 3 being the game of the year that that year was was one of the best games ever, right? And I think that is what I consider a a, a year of gaming where you have so many candidates that are available do you think that this is a year that could be considered that and i want to get your guys opinion first before i jump with mine hockey do you think that this would be a year of gaming yeah i mean listen they, they have a lot of games that could be um you know star games um the most important thing that should happen and that that you know will happen to make sure that this is a, a year of gaming is coming out with complete games. Um, you know, no bug, not not no bugs, but not a lot of bugs, not game breaking bugs. Um, I mean, the list of games that are coming out is, you know, there's a lot of good ones. So as long as they hit on, you know, bringing a full game uh, to the players, I think it could be a, you know, a, a year of gaming and all this last year almost you know 80 or 90 percent of the games unfortunately didn't come out full or had bugs or were unplayable for the first two weeks like overwatch so if they come out with full games um and they hit on you know the things that they're promising the promising the players i think it could be a pretty good year for gaming yeah yeah and uh angelica what do you think man 
on paper, it, it feels like it, but we, we kind of always know that when we go into the year, we're going to see some games get delayed into the following year. Um, they're not all going to come out um, as advertised. I do think, you know, when we talk about, it's really hard to get years like the one you mentioned, but my thought is, can it be as good as this past year in 2022? And I think it can, and I think it will. Um, again, the big question to me is going to be first-person shooters and multiplayer shooters coming into this year. You know, where is that coming from and which games are going to show out for that? But for story games and even some multiplayer, you know, story concepts, you know, I think it could be pretty good. Um, I think it could match uh, 2022 with the ceiling to pass it, but I don't think it will get to, you know, the kind of year that you mentioned where we got four three legendary games, a fourth that could win game of the year type of thing. I don't I don't know if we get to that. That's a really difficult thing to get to, right? And I think that when you're getting to a year of gaming, it has to meet that standard, right? You know, having two fantastic games, right? Two games it's that good. need to... Yeah, how, it's a difficult like, thing to 2022, do. 2022, if you look at overall the last five years, is a strong year of gaming. It was. It was. the last five years. Yeah, because if you think about it, like 2021 was kind of a down year, right? You did have yeah. two solid games, um, obviously, with uh, with Ghost of Tsushima and and Last of Us Part Two were two great games, um, but you know it felt like it like you, everyone kind of that twenty twenty or twenty nineteen. Tw- no, 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 that was twenty. That was twenty twenty. Uh, twenty twenty one. That was twenty twenty. No, no, twenty twenty one was uh, twenty one was last year, not twenty ten. Like this leg. Yeah, that was saying, last so was 20, two. What, what was twenty twenty one was. Uh, it takes two. It takes two. Yeah, the year before that was what yeah, last was it twenty or is 20, it twenty nineteen? I don't remember. No, it was twenty. I, thought, I believe it was twenty nine. Uh, twenty twenty. Yeah. Then it was twenty twenty because that was the year of uh, when COVID was going on. A lot of games got pushed out of it. That was when everyone thought that uh, that you know a lot of these games were going to get dropped the earlier. Right, twenty twenty one was where originally God of War was supposed to drop that year. It got pushed back to twenty twenty two, but it takes two was was that year was kind of also a kind of a down year relatively i think you had games like psychonauts which i thought was a pretty good game in that in that list and so was ratchet and clank but they yeah, yeah. They, they didn't necessarily they i mean granted i thought that year i had some solid games overall well, 2020 was solid 2019 was Sekiro. Yes, 2019 that was, was another that down was kind year. Of a down, that was yeah. another down year and then 20 yeah obviously then before that and you're starting to get even further down but at the end of the day, like you're you're having you're having really last this past year was a very most solid year you had other than the year of Legend of Zelda, you know, Breath of the Wild and Odyssey was kind of the closest thing we had to a similar output to this one, right? Where you had two very, very good games that were so near so close in how good they were. It it takes two definitely was a surprise for me, to be honest, when it, that game won. Um, but because that year did have some solid ones, but it didn't meet that level, like I said, with with The Witcher, with The Witcher Three and Fallout no, Four. And, and, and like you know, when you talk about it, you're mentioning like some top tier games, but then what's below it, right? And and so like that's why I thought 22 was pretty good. Like we have Elden Ring and God of War, but there were solid games below it. They just didn't reach. Yeah, they said it wasn't as close. Aspect. And yeah. I, if I'm thinking about this year, I think it ha- they have to meet the standard of having at least. At least three games that are like on the level of being, you know, top tier games that would, if they were by themselves, they would win. You know what I mean? Like if they were in the years like with Sekiro, they would win. Right? You know, that's how I always compare it. And this year, you you might see that, right? I think in my opinion, I think you will because if if Legend of Zelda Tears of the uh, Tears of the Kingdom comes out all all right, I think that will be a top tier game, right? Because yeah, I do trust Nintendo with, with with Legend of Zelda, right? I, yeah. I trust them with that game because they they always drop a good Legend of Zelda. There's never been a bad one. It's always a good game, but just how good is it? Yeah. You yeah. know, Sony, I trust with Spider-Man with how good the yeah. first one yeah, was in Miles Morales. Yeah. Like, they both were good games, right? So I think Spider-Man, I trust Sony with that. Final Fantasies, you know, granted, you might some people might like or dislike, but the way Final Fantasy 16 is with the way that the combat is similar to the previous game, and the way Final Fantasy VII Remake is like, I, I don't, I don't expect Final Fantasy sixteen yeah, to that suck. Square, that's Square Enix's baby. That's so, their, that's their main stake you know, like, is, is Final Fantasy. Yeah. And and X and Microsoft needs Starfield yeah. to be a good game, right? So it's like they bet their money on that game. They paid Bethesda 
so much money to buy Bethesda for that game, right? That that was what sold Microsoft to, to buy them was Starfield. They've been talking about this for years, and now it's finally coming out. So I could see this year being a game, a year of gaming. On paper, right? yeah, on paper, it looks it like sense. it. It looks like it, right? You have the the look of what that Witcher year looked like, right? With four games all looking good. And one of them obviously can be a down down compared to the other three, but they all look like they're all capable if they do things right, right? And that is true. I think that this, in my opinion, I think it will. I just, I hope it is because we've had years of, of down downhill and stuff with COVID. And now it seems like this is the year where all the games are finally releasing when they're supposed to release. And and with that being said, I do want to talk about really the last, the last kind of segment here about your your new year's resolutions and this kind of goes along with kind of you know i was new year's resolutions are where what do you want to do you know going forward in the next year and for us it's our gaming new year's resolutions and what do you want to see in the gaming year right all around from your perspective and i'll go first i think when i'm looking at year 2033 my gate new year's resolution is that let's get games to be complete on launch right can we finally go back to the time where games are dropped and not half broken half released with barely any content to play can we go back to the time where games are dropped with things to do and it makes you feel like the money you spent is worthwhile right because for too many years now right and this is you can make you you can blame covid for a lot of these reasons why some games are dropped half broken and they want to just get them out right i get that but it feels like it was been happening before COVID, right? It feels like we've been struggling through this issue for years now. And it's been that drift away from the box products to being live service. And yeah, it's great technology that we can do that. But I do want a year where we drop games that actually have content in them. And 2023 seems like a perfect time to do it, especially when we finally are escaping from COVID to a certain degree. And now we actually can have people back in buildings working on games and we can finally drop things that can be relatively finished. And I'm also expecting for people that started out with their, you know, their games starting with nothing to finish the product, right? Like games like Halo Infinite, games like, like dare I say it, Battlefield 2042, games like Cyberpunk should be looking to fix the problems that they've had from the, their launch years and give us something that we can be proud of for their product. Because I think this year has the full capability of doing that because of the amount of time we spent not playing, not being able to play your damn game because there's barely anything to do. 2023, my New Year's resolution for gaming is let's drop games with some content. Um, so, Hockey, I'll let you go next. What's your New Year's resolution for gaming? Yeah, I think we can all agree. Um, and mine's pretty much the same. I want to see games coming out um, that are complete. And the big thing for me, um, you know, I'm, I'm not um, huge on, on uh, redoing video games, you know, like the, uh, you know, like the remakes of, of video games. <laughs> I just want a new game, you know, um, but it's really important for that new game to come out complete, like Starfield, uh, uh, Redfall, a few other ones. Uh, if they come out complete. I'll be happy. That's really the baseline because it's been, like you said, it's been a couple of years. These new consoles have been out um, for a little bit now, so you really shouldn't have terrible problems with servers, uh, huge bugs, game-breaking bugs. So pretty much piggybacking off you, man. I want to see a year full of good games that are complete. And from now on, I am not spending any extra money on a game until I know it's going to be perfect. Because I spent $90 on Battlefield, you spent $110 on Battlefield, whatever it is. It was, that is a huge waste of money for a game that was so bad, you know? So just complete games. Yeah, I feel you, dude. And Langella Kill, what's your gaming New Year's resolution? Yeah, I got two of them. Uh, one I would love, and which is not going to happen, but it's, you know, a New Year's resolution, just like when the person says, like, I'm going to get a six pack, and then, you know, that never happens too. But um, the death of the battle pass is what I'm praying for. And uh, it's not going to happen. But what could be a consolation prize is kind of what you said more bang for your buck, uh, more filled battle passes, more worthwhile battle passes. Um, because the current battle pass system in practically every game that we played in is trash 
Um, it's been absolute trash. It's just a um, makeup version of loot boxes, and uh, it's just not worthwhile for people. And unfortunately, if you don't pay for it, you can't get the enjoyment of you know decking out your characters. But when you look at what they put out, there's it's not worth the money. And so, like, you want that aspect where, you, hey, I put in the time, I put in the work, I want to deck out my guy. Sure, you can get those microtransactions in stores. I get it. We're in that system now in the gaming world. But, man, they need to boost up those battle passes. And my other one, listen, Game Awards, which I do think is the leading to me when, when it comes to Game of the Year. I think they have become the leader now. There's a lot of different companies that do Game of the Year. But my second resolution is... 2023 needs to be the year for Microsoft, video game wise. And when you go through the nominees, I mean, this past year, you had Elden Ring win, which was a multi plat. You know, 21 was It Takes Two, which is multi plat. 2020 was Last of Us Part Two, Sony, right? Uh, 2019, Sekiro, multi plat. 2018, God of War, Sony. And 2017 was Nintendo. And you can see 2016, Overwatch was multi plat at the time last seven years we've gotten multiple multi-plats we've gotten sony winning a couple we have nintendo winning this year microsoft needs that we need a starfield we need something that is going to they need at least two game of the year finalists that is specifically microsoft and hopefully a game of the year nominee to say hey you know what we are back in the dance of producing games so that is kind of my second new year's resolution i'm not a microsoft fanboy but it feels like hey this is feels like the year on paper that we need to produce one of those at least battle legend of zelda whatever game becomes that next giant they need to be right there in the mix for game of the year yeah no i, I think I, I do agree and and the key thing is going to be can we make this competitive right because it doesn't look like as, it is as competitive like as much as Microsoft is a conglomerate, right, in the gaming space, they are looking like they're third place when it comes to Game of the Year contenders, right? And they have all this money and they have all these IPs that they can be using and they need to drop like an IP that is going to kind of catch the eye of everybody because Halo Infinite looked like it was going to be that until you realized how much content they had and their plan for live service was no plan at all, right? So that's that was the issue they had and I think they've they've dropped and they even the xbox executive said they dropped the ball they've they tripped at the finish line and that was not part of their plan i can guarantee you that was not part of microsoft's plan did not think that was going to happen and so i do agree with you it kind of goes coincides with everybody's i think hopefully all of our you know new new year's resolutions do come true because we want 20 we we are all gamers here guys i think if if you we, we haven't come across as multi multi platform gamers and i don't know what else to tell you i mean look behind me i got every every different type of symbol that you can think of from all the gaming companies and i played and all three of us have played multiple games we want gaming in general to be the best possible in 2023 right because that means us as consumers as gamers will have a fun year right and that means here at marsman gaming we will have a great year being able to do in year two of our of our channel being able to play more games to play and show off for everybody here. But that's going to be it for us, guys. I do appreciate everyone that came out to watch. And, and please, if you haven't done so yet, hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Go check us out on Twitch. Where we do live streams daily. Try to hit around three days a week. And we do a lot of different games and we play with the crew. So you can all more than welcome come join up and watch. And, and we also do community nights so you can come play with us too. But also join us on our Twitter uh, and our Discord. And that is located in the description below you just click on the links you can join up and obviously you can support the channel by hitting that patreon button and joining up and dropping some cash to help support the channel but that's gonna be it for us guys thank you thank you for watching thank you for dropping by this is marsman from marsman gaming signing off peace out guys